Uh, well, Thanks. joining me now, Rod Wheeler, former D.C. homicide detective. We've got Steve Rogers, former FBI military intel officer. Kathy Taylor, former National Security Council director. And Major General Robert Scales, Fox News military analyst. Guys, the FBI taking a lead in this investigation. Um, we just we just heard we heard from the family's uh, attorneys. Uh, we now the now we're calling it or the uh, FBI at least calling it a, a, a terrorist uh, a investigation. Steve, you've taken this position. You took this position right out of the gate. Uh, everyone's caught up to you now. Now where do we go? All right. Now that the FBI is in charge, they're going to be working in concert with uh, international military intelligence organizations, law enforcement organizations. They've done a superb job. They have kept away from the politics. And something needs to be said in view of this press conference. This is not a war against Muslims. You know, we have good and bad in all groups. This is a war against terrorists. Maybe that's the next thing that the president's going to have to do is come out and say, this is a war against terrorism. So you could be sure that the FBI now taking the lead, the best law enforcement organization in the world, uh, they're going to get to the bottom of this. It's interesting. Jeff Locke was talking about the attorneys for the family, for the Farouk family, and James Comey, both sort of saying the same thing with respect to they don't know why. There's a lot of confusion. There's a big sense of confusion that this was traditional uh, 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 sort of a jihadist sort of assault. Why didn't they yeah. take out more people at the center? Uh, why were so many pipe bombs left at the home? What happened here? There's a lot of confusion about this, Kathy. There may be a lot of chatter and a lot of confusion, but what there's not confusion about is that she proclaimed her allegiance to ISIS right before the attack, and that is typical trained protocol by ISIS. Whether this was inspired by ISIS or ordered by them doesn't matter. It was really by the definition, the legal definition in our country, an act of terror. Right, so we've got the terror thing down, but General Scales, I think it does matter to a lot of people, uh, you know, people being inspired but not instructed by ISIS, because for me, that means it's going to be a lot harder to sniff these guys out if, if they can take this sort of inspiration from acts around the world or whatever they think and then pick indiscriminate targets at indiscriminate times. Absolutely. Well, I guess the key word here, Charles, is inspire. In fact, their ISIS magazine is called Inspire. Uh, in many ways, this is the terrorist light on the hill. Uh, this is the great success story in the global jihad. This is the beginning of a caliphate. So whether you're in California or Germany or France or anywhere in the world, you look to the leadership and to the, and to the religious orthodoxy to sort of set your course and give you the motivation and the courage to go Go out and literally commit suicide for what, in essence, is a terrorist cause, Charles. Uh, Rod, I want to go out to you. You've been out there uh, for a couple of days now. You've done an amazing job. Uh, the wife's allegiance Thank you. Uh, to, to ISIS on Facebook, apparently it happened moments before right. they, uh, they went and committed the shooting. So it's kind of hard to say how we could have stopped them via that, uh, although there's going to be some pressure on Facebook and other social media outlets to step their game up. But what have you seen out there? What evidence have you seen, the neighbors or, or any of their other actions that maybe could have clued us in sooner? Well, you know, there were a number of neighbors, Charles, that I talked to that indicated that they saw a lot of traffic, individual men coming and going from the garage. I visited the home this morning, the outside of the home, and the way it's set up, I mean, you kind of have to see what's going on over there. So the neighbors were saying they saw these men of Middle Eastern descent coming and going in and out of the garage. So that, that in and of itself should have been a red flag. But I'll tell you, just like what's been reported, when I asked these people, Charles, uh, Charles, why didn't you call the police? Why didn't you say something? Of course, the immediate response was, I don't want to profile. I don't want to be accused of racially profiling. So they didn't say anything. Uh, so there were red flags there. The other thing that I think is really interesting from a law enforcement perspective and investigation, you know, were there red flags at the workplace, the building right behind me here where they had the Christmas party? Were there red flags, warning signs leading up to the shooting itself? I suspect there were. The FBI is continuing continuing to do a, a, a very aggressive investigation to get as many answers, Charles, as they can. Rod, I mean, Rod, it, it, Rod it, that is the case because the, the attorneys for the Farouk family just moments ago uh, brought up the issue of, right. of um, Saeed's beard. Uh, you know, apparently he let it start. He had started to grow out and some maybe more than once it was made fun of at the workplace. Uh, in fact, I saw one report, uh, I'm not sure if it's true or not, that perhaps a, a Jewish co-worker uh, particularly made fun of this. The lawyers seem to be putting that out right. there now. And so let's say that is the case, and that happened. Would a supervisor have seen sort of a dust-up? Would there have been something there at the workplace that may have clued someone in to make a phone call? 
I think there should have been, and there probably was, and we just don't know what that was yet, Charles. But let me just say this, and this is so important. You know, I've been in law enforcement a long time, and when I got here the evening of the incident, one of the police officers allowed me to take a close look at the actual street where all the, the sh shell casings were on the street. I've never seen anything like it before. And then when you look at the carnage that happened at this building right behind me here, this was a serious terrorist attack. And unless we recognize that and unless we address it right away, trust me when I tell you, and I speak from experience, we're going to relive it. This is a major deal. You know, Charles, it's one thing to see this on TV and to read about it in the paper. I've been here, Charles, and let me tell you, I've never seen anything like it. Wow. You know, Steve, on that note, uh, you know, the, the people said that, uh, even his attorney said that Saeed would be in the, in the garage working on the car or whatever. Sometimes the door would be, to be open. And the idea that people were so suspicious but intimidated or concerned about how they would look about being politically correct and not saying anything is really shocking. And to Rod's point, if we don't say something soon, the second one's going to happen, the very next one's going to happen. Right. We are paying the price for what we call politically correct. From the White House down to local government levels, we have been conditioned. When I say we, the American people have been conditioned to say, you see something, say nothing. We got to hear more about, like the FBI director said today, and I really thank God he said it, if you see something, say something. No matter how insignificant it is, and Rod could attest to this, we've always found a, a, a bigger story behind the little story that the American people give us. Kathy? Yes, and you know, I think what Steve said is exactly right, and we're not fighting a war against Islam. We're fighting a war against Islamic extremism. But let's remember this. Let's let Democrat be, the Democratic Party be the party of fear-mongering and scarlet letters. Let's let the but Republican Party... But is it fear-mongering, though? I mean, so where do we draw this line? Because as soon as you hear that term, you just brought it up, fear-mongering. So when is it fear-mongering? Um, uh, this, this couple moves in, the woman has on the burqa, she stays to herself, she doesn't drive. Those are somewhat traditional Islamic values, but for Americans, it's a little unnerving. You say, what the heck is going on? And then all of a sudden, these visits to the house, all types of night, all kinds of noises being made. At what point do you say, forget about the fear-mongering, I am afraid. We are afraid, but you know what the Suleiman of the Sunnis says in Iraq? Now, this is the Sunni faction. These are not extremists like ISIS. These are Sunnis in Iraq that actually get attacked by ISIS. And you know what he says to his people when they're targeted? If you're already wet, don't be afraid to go out in the rain. And we are a great country filled of great citizens, and the only way we're going to protect ourselves is be the best, freest nation in the world. And we, we should, can't stop everybody. And, 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 and Charles, may I say, we should them. not fear our own government if we say something. And a lot of that's, that's right. going on. I could tell you that cops on the street, not, they're not afraid of anything. They're brave men and women, but they're concerned that if they take that extra step, they're going to get crucified by the leadership of this government. Right. So we have to con recondition, go just set back the clock and say, look, do your job. We got your back. You know, to that point, uh, General Scales, uh, you know, so ironic. They, uh, they set up the jury for the first Freddie Gray uh, trial this week. Uh, yeah. it's sort of lost in the news. But we know what happened in Baltimore. Once the police became intimidated, worried about their public image, they pulled back. The city has gone completely. I mean, it's already in trouble, but it is really literally the wild, wild west. Yeah. And if the police are intimidated, certainly the average citizen is going to feel intimidated, too, when they think they're doing the right thing. Yeah, see, I, I, my sense is that there's this certain pall over our society, and it goes in two different directions. On, on our end of the pond, it's the whole idea of, of uh, worrying about your neighbor, not wanting to appear to be, uh, you know, to be profiling. And police, there's a certain hand on the shoulder of policemen. But then go to the other side of the pond, Charles, and it is hate. It's a level of hatred. It's a level of, 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 of just of, of a cruel desire to, to kill that's so foreign to Americans. The idea that a guy can and his wife can grab two assault rifles and kill 14 people is just anathema. I'm sure the neighbor next, to, next door wasn't thinking that these two were going to go out and kill 14 people and leave 1,600 rounds lying, uh, uh, shell casings lying on the street. It's just a tough leap for us to make. We always say in the Army, the hardest thing for a soldier to believe when he goes into combat is that the enemy really hates him and wants to kill him. Well, there's a societal analogy to this, and I think we're all living with it. Steve, uh, their attorney said that, their attorney for the Farouk family said there's no clear smoking gun evidence. Uh, we heard about the thousands and thousands of rounds uh, that were in the SUV. Obviously, that was shot at the, uh, at the, at the uh, center. And of course, in the house, there were even more, along with the 12 pipe bombs. How could he say that? How, how could he 
even say for a second that there was no clear smoking gun evidence. I've seen this time and time again over my 38 years in law enforcement. The bad guys try to make the good guys look like the bad guys, all right? Smoking gun evidence, you just spelled it out, the ammunition, the pipe bombs. But what about, what about the pledge to ISIS? To me, that's the biggest piece of smoking right. gun evidence. So all they're trying to do is divert it. Make the good guys look like the bad Smoke, guys. The, the pledge to ISIS was the straw that broke the camel's back, Kathy. That's even when the FBI, probably, probably the FBI wanted to call this what it was. I mean, you know how it works better than anyone else. But that's probably when they got permission from the White House to say, go ahead, tell the world what they already know. That's this right. was terrorism. That's exactly right. This was radical exactly. Islamic terrorism. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so now what do you think? Where do we go from here? Now that the gloves have come off, uh, and the FBI is being allowed to do their job. I heard Comey say that they're investigating hundreds of people. They're running down hundreds of leads around the world at this very moment. Look, I mean, there's no doubt that there's a big threat out there. We've known it. The president has chosen not to acknowledge it or do anything about it. It's happened on our soil now. Uh, I think we can expect more, unfortunately. And so the question is whether he's going to put a strategy forward. We keep asking for one, and I don't know at what point people need to beg any further. Um, it, yeah. You know, it's a scary world out there. And, and but to, we need to be about solutions. And to your point, this is definitely an area where we don't want to, quote, lead from behind. That's right. Guys, we've right. got breaking news for you. The FBI now investigating this shooting in San Bernardino is an act of terrorism and there's also a new report that shows isis that there's an isis cell get this in every single state that means yours too we'll be right back every place in america is a target for a terrorist attack we need to come to grips with the idea that we are in the midst of the next world war that was Chris Christie, uh, Chris Christie, rather, speaking last night about how the conflict of ISIS has grown into, well, many people are saying World War III. And earlier, of course, uh, the German government voted to begin supporting the U.S.-led coalition in the Middle East. The normally war-shy country oh, it's actually overwhelmingly voted in favor of providing air support missions and reconnaissance, along with refueling. So is Chris Christie right? Are we in the midst of the next great world war? Back to discuss Steve Rogers and Major Robert Scales. General, I'll go to you. I'm sorry, Ma General Robert Scales. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been a long, it's been a long day. I don't want to demote you here. Um, That's fine. World War III, hashtag World War III has been floating around here for a while, particularly since the Paris massacre. Today, right. James Comey said they had hundreds of people running down leads all over the world. I mean, is that the conclusion? Are we in some type of new world war? Well, clearly, this is a global war on terrorism, Charles. You know, I find it so interesting that for the last 57 minutes on your show, all we've talked about is defense. And the FBI is doing a great job defending the homeland. But look, this world war is not going to end well unless we go on the offensive. You know, you only win wars by striking at the center of gravity or the heart of the enemy's, uh, of the enemy's operation. And that's ISIS. They're the, they're the motive force behind these uh, jihadists. That's the light on the hill. That's what, keeps, that's what gives them hope uh, that they can somehow support ISIS, ISIS and change the course of, world, of the world. That the only way you're going to stop this is, yes, play defense. Find the bad guys on the homeland, but eventually the fight's got to go to ISIS. And as you can, as you've heard over the last couple of days, the pendulum's starting to swing. Two months ago, the French, then the British, the other day, and now the largest country in NATO and the country least likely to engage in foreign expeditions, Germany. They've decided to join the fight. Hopefully, this will start turning the tide away from defending ourselves right. to going on the attack. Now, unfortunately, though, with, uh, with uh, despite all those great things that the general just talked about. The leadership, President Obama, still loathed to go fight this fight in a way that I would describe as trying to win it. Look, the governor and the general are absolutely right. And in the governor's case, I'm sure he sees what we talked about last week. You know, during World War II, you see the march of Germany, the march of the Nazis going right across Europe, <laughs> right to the doorstep of England. We're seeing ISIS do that. The difference is the fight is going to be here. The general's right. We're going to be fighting in the streets of America like we saw a few days ago if we don't take the war to their land. In the meantime, though, they've spread to Libya, right? So now that Raqqa is being bombed to smithereens, uh, I'm hearing reports that they just, because they've taken such a large swath of land in Libya, now they've got another safe haven uh, de facto state. And the president's response is we've contained ISIS. Sorry, Mr. President, ISIS has contained us. We've got to get out of the box Absolutely. and do what the general said. Take the Absolutely. fight to them. All right, guys. Right. Thank you both very much. I appreciate your expertise tonight.